All right. So the next best way to make money is to sell a service. Uh, unlike fundraising, when you are selling a service, you have to actually do something. Uh, you have to actually provide some service uh, in order to make money. So let's let's look at uh, at what this is all about. OK, so when you sell a service, um, number one, understand that 60 percent of your revenue is going to come from your current clients. Now, you may be asking, who are your current clients if you have no clients? Well, your current clients are f your network, the people in your circle, your family, your friends. Um, any any type of organization you go into when you're dealing with sales, the first thing they'll tell you is you have to be able to sell to your family and friends. If you can't sell this service to your family and friends, to your neighbors, to your peers, then it's probably not a good service. If it's not something that you uh, want to purchase yourself if you don't think it's such a great idea that you want your mom to have this service it's not a good service that simple okay so 60 percent of your revenue comes comes from your current clients 30 percent of your revenue comes from new clients now who are those new clients those new clients are the people that your current clients bring on because guess what if it's such a great service your current clients are going to go out and tell other people about this great service and those are your new clients 10% of your revenue comes from the broader market. 10%. That's strangers. The broader market, those are strangers. Those are people that don't know you. They've never met you. Maybe they just saw your ad somewhere and decided to try you out. That's 10% of your revenue. So selling a service has to begin at home. It has to. It has to. Uh, you, can't, you can't sell a service by going out and marketing to only uh, strangers. It just it won't work. It just won't work. So remember that it's all about your network. It's about the people who are around you. OK, and that's the reason why it's so important um, to have an environment um, that that is supportive. Right. Because when you wake up in the morning, you step outside your door. Who are you looking at? Right. What are the services that the people who surround you pay for? Those are the services that you're going to want to sell. Whatever the people around you buy, whatever services they purchase, those are the services that you want to sell because those are your clients. Those are the people that are going to buy from you. You can't wake up in the morning and sell a service to the people in your area, in your network that don't buy that service or don't need that service or, or don't want that service. It doesn't work. You have to go and you have to sell a service that your people want. Rule number two, keep in mind that competition is not only between firms, but between people and ideas. Know your clients and what you can do for them. Um, this one, I'm going to get a little bit into marketing, okay? Just a little bit. So um, when you start a company, there's a couple things you can do, okay? You can either be a pioneer right which is a company that is offering a brand new service that no one has ever heard of before they've never seen before okay now these services and these companies these pioneers um can be really great stories and these are the stories um that we remember um and that we we hail as great companies and 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 very genius people you know like oh how great of them to think of this idea that no one else came up with but understand that it's very, very hard to sell a service to someone that's never heard of this service before. Very difficult. Very difficult. The second type of business is what's called a copycat. Okay? Most firms, most companies, most services are only copycats. All right? And in my opinion, that's the best realm to be in. Because the pioneer has already gone out and created a market for you. They've already gone out and explained to people what this service is and, 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 and why it's beneficial and how much it costs and how you pay for it, right? They've already figured that out. They've already gone in and made all the mistakes. And, and now you get to come behind them and literally just copycat, right? Um, a really good um, uh, example of this is a uh, uber and lyft okay i remember a long time ago uh they first started ride sharing 
it was leaving your car at the airport when you, when you were traveling and someone can use your car uh, while you were away right um, and then it went from that to to ride sharing to work and things of that nature and then you have uh, uber the way it is now right well now you have lyft that just comes in behind uber and says oh we can do this too <laughs> right and and so what i mean lyft is 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 big time right it's a big money company and um and um and now you have all kind of companies everywhere that are copycat and and just kind of um uh, jumping on the bandwagon for ride sharing and that that happens in every industry you know that's just the way it is um and understand like like rule number two says that the competition is not only other companies but ideas as well so a copycat has the uh the benefit of looking at the pioneer and figuring out a way to make the service better to make the service cheaper right that's the competition it keeps the pioneers on their toes and it provides a better service to us consumers it works out for everyone rule number three engage your target audience again this goes back to networking this is talking to the people in your circle talking to the people in your group talking to your friends talking to your coworkers, talking to your family talk to them ask them say hey what what you know what problems are you having right what services do you enjoy what services do you want that you don't have right you have to have these conversations and honestly um, a lot of this stuff happens organically and it's, it's best if it happens organically it just comes up in normal conversation you know a lot of times when you go to someone and you're asking them these interview type questions they shut down or they uh, they don't want to be bothered at the time but when you're just having a normal organic conversation um you can glean all this information you can you can pick up this information and learn and figure out what it is that your target audience the people that surround you want and need 